Hello again, it's entry number two. This time let's talk about video. So we're not even going to look at any code. Uh, so if that's boring to you, I guess you can stop watching now. But I wouldn't because this is actually really uh, kind of a fascinating underpinning, uh, which I... I imagine will come out in various ways throughout the build, but nonetheless, it's worth talking about now, which is how do you actually uh, do video playback in modern terms? Simple version, you take a video element with a source equals something dot mp4 or dot mom, whatever, whatever container codec combo works, right? And you can have multiple sources inside. It's fair enough, you can do that. More modern versions use something called MSE, apparently, which is, stands for Media Source Extensions, I think? Yes, that sounds about right. The idea is, um, rather than giving the uh, video element a, a, a file, a, li a link to a source, uh, like you would with an image or even an audio element or something like that, what you do is you have a buffer underneath. So you attach a buffer to the video element and then you start filling in that buffer yourself. Cool. So you kind of maybe XHR in each individual chunk so that you can start playing the video quickly. You can get, you know, your video in, in chunks, uh, fetch, XHR, whatever works, and you build up that buffer and the player, the video player, plays that video and everybody's happy. So that's like the next step up. Then there's another step up above that, which is a thing called Dash, which is Dynamic Adaptive Streaming over HTTP. I don't know whether they named it Dash before or after. They went, let's call it Dash. What does it stand for? I don't know. Dynamic Adaptive Sugar-Filled Helium. No, that's not going to work. However they did it, Dash is the idea that instead of one video file, that is, say, like a 1080p video, you have different quality versions of, say, your video and your audio, and you want to swap depending on what the user's bandwidth is looking like. So if they're on a low bandwidth situation, uh, then you want to adapt to a lower quality video to just keep them going. And this dovetails into MSE because you've got this buffer that you're filling. Well, why not fill that buffer with a lower quality version when it makes sense to do so, or a higher quality version when that makes uh, sense to do that. So you're using Dash to kind of swap uh, between qualities and you're filling that buffer in that way. So that's that's MSE and Dash in a very, very, very short space of time and is probably about as well as I understand them. Now, in order to get your video into that format, there are a bunch of ways you can do it, but there's normally something like FFmpeg is used to going to be used to take the big video and turn it into all the different quality variations that you need, all those different, uh, I think they're called representations or adaptations. Or, uh, anyway, representations, I think is what it is. Um, and then you have, uh, there's there's a bunch of, you know, tools that you can use. The one I've been using is called the Shaka Packager, which ties into the Shaka Player, which I'll talk about some other point. With a Shaka Packager, you give it all the different uh, versions of your video and it creates this manifest that has like how much bandwidth each one needs and what size it is. Is it like 1280 by 720 or 1920 by 1080? And um, uh, what codecs it's using, all that kind of stuff. So it makes this big manifest that is a Dash manifest that you can hand over to a Dash compatible player. So that's all good. That works on, uh, I believe it's Chrome, I think, Firefox Desktop Safari. I, I make that distinction because it matters. Uh, Chrome, Firefox, Desktop Safari. I don't remember how Edge is. I'll have to look that one up. Or you can look it up yourself because, I mean, that's how the internet works. And then on the mobile Safari side, things are a little different. Uh, there's a thing called HLS, which I can't remember what that stands for. Bear with me. I'm just going to Google it. <clears throat> HTTP live streaming. Effortless, you see. Uh, <laughs> and it's an alternative way of uh, splitting down the big... Uh, MP4 
or whatever you've got into different chunks that you can then swap between. And, it, and so in some ways it's sort of analogous to Dash because you have these different versions of the file. So you've started with your you know, big HD video and you split it down into different qualities. And then the you make an HLS manifest and there are tools that you can get um, that will segment the file, the media file, and uh, make a playlist of all these different variations and all that kind of stuff. And then you end up at the end of this, instead of a dash manifest, you end up with an M3U8 manifest. It's like, it's a playlist file, which you can, on Mobile Safari, you just say video source equals, and then you give it that playlist file, this M3U8 playlist file, and it will do the rest. Um, so that's the kind of video on demand way of doing it. I think it's slightly different again if you do live streaming. I haven't even looked at live streaming yet, so uh, bear with me. And I haven't even looked at things like uh, encrypted media. All things for future stuff. Right now I've been concentrating on, I have a video. What on earth do I need to do to this video to make it play? So there you go. Um, so there's, there's the MSE, but really Dash and HLS. Dash and HLS seem to be the two uh, things that I'm going to be looking at, hopefully making them automatically swap between each, whichever one, you know, depending on support. Uh, and I guess that's that. So stick with me. Uh, in the next uh, episode, I think I'm going to show you um, around some of the prototypes I've been building uh, because those have been quite interesting to build as well to try out some of these things. I should show. show you, I'll show you the manifests. Yes, I will show you like the the dash and the HLS manifests. Loads of stuff. It's there's so much uh, that we can talk about. Uh, if you speaking of which, speaking of which, if there's things that you want me to cover, don't forget to drop those in the comments. Everybody who's been commenting so far, thank you. Uh, it's lovely to have your uh, your input and your feedback. And I will see you in the next episode. Hey folks, thanks for watching. Don't forget that there is more content that you can find kind of over here ish. And if you want to subscribe, there's probably a button. I don't know, maybe there, maybe somewhere around there. Click that if you've not done that. Brilliant.